Hey guys, this week I'm going to make and install the carpet. Alright, this week is the carpet and the first thing to do is to strip everything out and what my plan is, is to actually glue the carpet to the sound deadening pieces I put in last week and um, make my own carpet kit up. I could buy a carpet kit but particularly with the thickness of the sound deadening I don't know whether it would fit and to be honest, why buy it when I can make it? Alright, I've just gone through and have spent the last uh, 20 minutes or so just doing some fine tuning of the trimming, just making sure everything sort of fits the way I want it to. It's a bit hard to sort of get it to sit flat by itself. I'm going to have to uh, seal it down and I think when I put the carpet on it, it's going to become a bit um, stiffer and probably a little bit more difficult to mould. Hopefully it'll hold a more solid shape or that's what I'm hoping for anyway. So now it's time to take all the bits out and glue them onto the carpet. So the next step is to get all of these pieces and glue carpet to them. And this is my carpet. Now I could have bought a carpet kit. I could have got a black or a grey carpet quite um, easily. I didn't want a black or a grey carpet because uh, when I reveal a bit later the colours I'm doing on the interior, this will all come to make sense. So this is a bit of a, a brown marine carpet that I that I got. Um, I like the marine carpet because it's got that uh, bit of a, a raw race type feel to it. Also, the other benefit I have, and I'm not sure whether I'm going to do this or not at this stage, is that it doesn't, uh, I don't believe this stuff should fray as much on the edges. So I'm still yet to work out whether I'm going to do a trim around the edges. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll this out upside down and glue these pieces to the carpet. This is all the carpet I could get, so if I don't have enough, I'm got to come up with another plan. So um, let's uh, roll this out and just see if we, what I've got for starters will fit. So I've laid all this stuff out and it's come to my attention that basically I didn't get enough carpet. Um, at least not for my original plan. The um, the carpet supply, this was the end of the line, this is all that they had, so um, it's either use this or I have to go and order something else. Yeah, I realised with all my, my messing around that the centre console around the handbrake and gear lever and all of that, I don't have enough carpet to, to do them, but I have got another plan for them now that I've just sort of come up with and I'm already picturing it in the interior and I think it will look quite good. So um, I've got roughly what I need to um, get the ball rolling. So the next step is to clean all this stuff up and glue it down. All right, uh, now everything is glued down onto the carpet and the next step is just to cut it all out and um, then we'll see how well it fits. I think my plan needs a big rethink because ultimately it's really, it's not working. It's not working the way I wanted it to work and it's definitely not good enough for uh, the standards that I want for this. Um, as soon as I curve any of these pieces, the glue just lets go. Um, it's all just not hanging on. I think ultimately in the end my idea of trying to make it removable, it's just not going to work. The, the carpet and the sound deadening together are just too thick. They are gonna to be too difficult to have it sit down nicely where it looks nice. I put this all in last night and um, I was quite annoyed and I uh, went inside and I uh, 
and I've been thinking about it uh, overnight and I think the best method is to just stick down all the sound deadening, do it all properly, tape it all down, have it uh, in there first and then add the carpet on top and also glue that to the sound ending as best I can. And um, I think that's gonna give me the best result in the end because uh, ultimately I want this to look nice and even though I would like it to be removable, the fact is, is that I'm going to be very rarely driving it on the track. It's not gonna be any serious racing so it'll just be getting out there to have some fun and I can have some fun if it weighs a little bit extra. Um, it's still going to be a reasonably light car. I, I think this is still probably not much more than what the factory sound pads weighed before. So um, round two this time, all the carpet out, sound deadening, stick it in properly and uh, go from there. So as I was taking that out, I sort of went through and did a bit more fine tuning, just making sure everything was just the way I want it with all the uh, sound editing pieces. Now it's time to stick it all down. Here goes. Okay, so now everything's been glued down. I've taped it as best I can. No tape really likes to stick to it. I tried several different types, duct tape. Um, the uh, clear packing tape seems to be the, uh, the only one that seems to be able to sort of grab hold of it a little bit. So um, now I'm gonna try and glue what I can of the carpet over the top and uh, do it in pieces and see if it will hold. Um, doing it piece by piece. So uh, let's give it a go. All right, the spray glue on all the carpet parts, it doesn't hold well enough. It keeps lifting up. So I'm gonna try the, uh, the contact adhesive this time and see if by painting it on, it can give some, a bit more bite to the, uh, to the carpet. So uh, let's try this one. Now I've got the glue on the back of all these pieces um, and it's, tacky I'm gonna try and put it in again and this time I'm gonna even I'm gonna try and use the uh, heat gun to try and help mold it into uh, where it needs to go and we'll see what happens I'm reasonably happy with that it's not perfect it still needs a little bit of um, touching up here and there but um, as you can see it's all in there reasonably nicely I mean it's still got a bit of movement um, it will settle down over time and the edges over these edges there and, and here it's all lifted up but this is going to be held down by a trim piece of some sort I'm still yet to work out exactly what I'm going to do with that I haven't glued in the, the, the floor mats on either side the rest of the carpet is all glued in and in the back here I'm going to do something and reuse this rear panel. I'm obviously going to retrim it and uh, tidy it up, but uh, and I, I may have to remake some of the the pieces underneath. But overall, I think it's uh, really starting to come together. As I said earlier, the uh, the center console, these are mostly covered up by the rails of the seats anyway, and uh, the center console here. I've got a new plan for that, um, so that will be in a future episode. I still need to go back and finish off some of these pieces in the um, footwell here to tidy it all up. I am looking back now at refitting the air conditioning that I pulled out of this car. Yeah, it's going to require a little bit of playing around, but um, yeah, if I fit that back in the car, then I'm potentially going to have a more comfortable car that I can daily drive. and. Um, in for a penny, in for a pound. Let's, uh, let's get this car as nice and comfortable as possible. It's still gonna be a quick car and it's still not gonna be that heavy. It just won't be a stripped out super lightweight. But uh, I plan on having one of my other projects 
e.g. the Datsun. Or the Alpha uh, as a race car in the future so um, that I can take more to the track. This, uh, I'm soon realizing that um, an old 911 is far too expensive to just break at the track all the time. So I want this to last. As you just saw, I've spent a little bit of time trimming the sound deadening, and getting that just right, and I've gone around and trimmed all of the edges of the foam off of the mass-loaded vinyl. So basically it will sit nicer, so it has a bit of a curve, so the edges, instead of lifting up where the pieces overlap, they should sit nicely now. And I've also gone in and trimmed around the edges of the carpet, and I've left about a five mil overhang on all of the carpet so that it will cover up any of the overlaps and edges and I'm not going to glue these in. I may put some Velcro pads on them later just so they don't slide around and they sort of lock in underneath the seats with these um, notched cutouts. So I think they should stay pretty still because there's nothing worse than floor mats that move. Uh, so uh, alright let's uh, get these in the car and see how we go. That is the carpet looking pretty good. I am pretty happy with how it's come out. There's still a little bit more work I've got to do in behind the, um, the pedals. The rest of it's looking pretty decent. There's a few little things I'm still trying to work out what sort of trim panels I'm gonna put in here around the feet of the roll cage. I'm thinking that these trim panels here, what you will see of them, is probably gonna stand out a bit much in orange, so I might need to go through and do a little bit black. Besides that, it's looking pretty good, so I think that must mean it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hi guys. As many of you will know, James Dean was an avid race car driver. It was when he was on his way to a race meet that he was killed driving his now famous Porsche 550 Spider, which was nicknamed Little Bastard. What you may not know, however, is that the car was said to be cursed. The famous customizer, George Barris, when he bought the rig and it arrived at a shop, it crushed an employee's legs while it's being taken off the trailer. And then there was the case of the thief who tried to make off the steering wheel and who got his arm broken in the attempt. And then finally, there's been a lot of cases of people who have bought parts from the car and then been involved in fatal car crashes. So, is it just a series of, of coincidences? Or was the car really, in fact, cursed? All right, guys. Um, as much as I love the uh, the 550 Spiders, I don't think I want any James Dean parts on my car. Uh, just to be safe. But uh, anyway, that's it for another week. Carpet's done. Um, as you can see, it is the season to be jolly. So um, be safe over this holiday season, and um, we'll see you next time. All right, see you guys.